Pushoy. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are uh, very honored to be here uh, uh, this uh, morning, uh, having a very, very interesting and important uh, visit, uh, because uh, clearly European uh, uh, Space uh, Agency is extremely important uh, as uh, uh, a very important partner of uh, European Union, European Parliament. I'm uh, happy to have here uh, Director General Ashbacher and also Commander Cristoforetti. And uh, I'm Christian Busoi, Chair of Industry Research and Energy Committee. We'll have some short uh, uh, statements, very short statements, and then of course we are at your disposal for uh, uh, any questions you may have. Uh, uh, European Space Agency is a long-standing EU partner since 2000 when developing a joint space strategy uh, followed by European Space uh, Policy in 2003. Our flagship uh, space programs, Galileo for satellite navigation and Copernicus for Earth observation, represented the first framework of EU-ESA agreement. The divided roles uh, between uh, ESA and the uh, European Union are still relevant nowadays. EU space needs uh, European Space Agency by our side with its expertise, and we need ESA to work hand in hand with EUSPA, our space agency, implementing the flagship programs in the space uh, sector. We entrusted during the years uh, uh, ESA to deliver without delays on the new generation satellites according to the user requirements, so the new services to be delivered match the expectations of the new markets and new business models in a more and more competitive international uh, uh, arena. We need to ensure together in our partnership that uh, European Union space remains competitive. We must ensure stability and evolution of the EU space programs and prepare the new generations on a user-driven basis to continue delivering state-of-the-art services. We need our very important partner, ESA, to support European Union in its upcoming assessment exercise on the risks for EU security and public order relating notably to emerging and critical technologies for its space infrastructure to be better detected and mitigated. In terms of newly released uh, actions foreseen by European Commission communication on space defense strategy, we need to work together while the Union needs to define better military needs and requirements when establishing the service portfolio of Iris Square and how to develop cooperation with NATO in space security. Finally, I would like to once again underline the uh, strong uh, commitment of Industry Research and Energy Committee that space will remain a priority for our committee, for European Parliament, and for the Union. And uh, of course, we are looking forward to explore the collaboration with the uh, ESA on our upcoming work. Communication of, to the European Parliament and the Council to the European Union Space Strategy for Security and Defense, which was released just uh, last week. Space traffic management, you know that European Parliament requested European Commission to provide the legislative proposal uh, in 2024 and European Commission is working on it. So this legislation will make a big step towards security in space. And of course, uh, there is also the idea that European Commission will consider proposing an EU space law. Uh, we need also to uh, work uh, uh, in the future with Satchen and EUSPA towards uh, the gradual setup of a new Comer Copernicus governmental service. And here we rely, as we rely on all the other initiatives, on uh, European Space Agency expertise to keep this in mind when developing all the European Union present and future initiatives in space. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Mr. Joseph Hasselbasser, Direc Director General of the European Space Agency. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Buzoy, uh, for having this opportunity to really address uh, the community uh, at large on, on what is space for Europe. Just a, a very quick introduction on uh, what we are talking here in terms of space and where we stand globally. And uh, you have outlined, uh, Mr. Buzoy, very impressively of how important space is for everyday life. Space is today an economy that is worth about 350 billion US dollars or euros, and it is projected to grow to about one trillion in the next decade. And Europe has extremely good capabilities 
thanks to all the investments made on the side of the European Space Agency, the side of the European Commission and member states, which we have built up over the years. You mentioned uh, Copernicus and Galileo. I'm very proud to say that uh, these programs have been initiated about 20 years ago within the European Space Agency context, uh, always hand in hand with the European uh, Commission. And now they are flagship programs among the best in the world, if not the best in the world, in both Earth observation and uh, Galileo and, uh, or navigation. And this, this is, I think, something where Europe can be very proud of that we have achieved that. Personally, uh, I have been working in the European Commission for several years. I know the European Commission and European Union context very well. Now I'm the Director General of the European Space Agency since two years. And when I put a strategy on the table for my mandate, the number one priority is the eu ESA relationship. The relationship between both institutions because we cannot do without each other, we need each other, and we are very complementary because we are a technical agency, we have about 6,000 people, mostly engineers and scientists, and we build space programs and space infrastructure, and that's what we do. Of course, we have also very uh, excellent astronauts. Uh, Samantha Cristoforetti will then uh, say a word on the astronautical part, on the exploration part. But we are the agency, uh, about 60% of the public spending in space is spent through the European Space Agency. And I'm very happy and very proud that we work so close with the European Commission, the European Union, uh, and the European Parliament in particular on uh, making this possible. The next challenge is Iris Square. Uh, we have uh, achieved uh, a very strong support at the ESA Ministerial Conference uh, in November last year, 640 million uh, on the side of the ESA member states to contribute to the program that is now being initiated. Uh, but this is part of a wider uh, subscription that the ESA member states have been uh, giving uh, us uh, to ESA in order to implement new space programs worth uh, 17 billion uh, euros for the next three years, which is 17% more than in the previous ministerial uh, conference in 2019, which also shows that the member states across Europe are fully committed to space. They are recognizing the importance of space for strategic reasons, for economic reasons, for geopolitical reasons, and therefore I'm very happy to say that space is on, on a very steep path upwards uh, towards space, uh, and uh, we are making this possible together. But also, I'd like to call on politicians, uh, and especially our colleagues and friends in the European Parliament, to really bring all the support necessary that Europe stays on top of space activities in order to really compete in a very, very contested environment. So from my side, from the side of the European Space Agency, you have all, you have all the commitment that I'm working very close, hand in hand, with the European Commission, with the European Parliament, with the European Union to make this possible. Thank you very much. Uh, and now, uh, Commander uh, Samantha Cristoforetti, astronaut from the European Space Agency. Yes, good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to say that it's an immense honor for me to be invited today to celebrate um, International Women's Day at the um, European Parliament. So I'm very grateful to President Metzler for the invitation and uh, very grateful to uh, Mr. Pujoy for the opportunity of uh, uh, briefly um, addressing you uh, in this uh, context. Uh, very proud to represent the European Astronaut Corps here at the European Parliament. Um, it's very strong symbolism, I think. It's the heart of European democracy and decision making. And we are here today to talk about space. And I don't know if this would have been the case a decade ago or even a few years ago. I think there is a growing awareness and understanding of how important space is, not only for research, not only for science, uh, but how it's really woven into the fabric of modern society. So nothing works anymore without space in terms of our economies, our societies, the services to our citizens, our security. Um, and it's great to see how that is recognized and uh, how there is an increasing effort to invest in space capabilities in Europe in greater autonomy or non-dependence um, so that Europe can really, in the space domain, play a role, be in a position that is commensurate, that is corresponding to the uh, political and economic weight that uh, Europe has in the world. Um, much has been said already about uh, the flagship programs, uh, Copernicus, Galileo, the new Iris squared. Um, and of course, as an astronaut, uh, what's dearest to me is uh, exploration. Uh, and so I, I will have this amazing opportunity today of addressing the plenary and uh, among 
other things, uh, I will uh, express my wish. It's, it's, it's a dream, but I think it can become a reality um, that uh, we will uh, step up our level of ambition in exploration as well. I've had the um, incredible opportunity of uh, fulfilling twice my dream of going to space. Once I flew on a Russian vehicle, once I flew on an American vehicle. And uh, if I can allow myself to dream some more, <laughs> my next dream is that maybe future European astronauts will have an opportunity of flying on a European vehicle. And that on this European vehicle, maybe we will be able to welcome astronauts from other places in the world as well. I think it would have an incredible um, political, strategic, psychological even uh, impact. It will really convey the message that in space we want to play uh, on the same level as the great actors in the world, that we want to obviously continue to work together in international partnerships, uh, but play a bigger role uh, so that we can uh, better contribute to also set the way, make decisions, and be in a good position to reap the benefits from all the incredible economic, industrial, um, research technological opportunities that come from uh, space. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, just one yes, word, uh, of course. I'll take this opportunity for, uh, because Iris Square was uh, several times mentioned and it's very important that European Space Agency will be part with its expertise and experience of this extra extraordinary important program. A very uh, high word of uh, appreciation and thank you for Mr. Grudler. Christoph Grudler and the team of uh, European Parliament, of Shadows Rapporteur, and also for Commissioner Thierry Breton, Director General Person, and the whole team in European Commission, and of course for the Council for having so successfully and quickly adopted this uh, program that will raise our ambitions in space. And uh, even that maybe uh, we need to do more in order to fulfill the dream of Commander Christopher Retti, uh, it's uh, an important step forward. Thank you. Thanks to you. And now it's time for questions for the journalist. Uh, anyone willing to do a question? Yes, can you go to the microphone and say your name and your media, please? Marco Calvarese del SIR, Agenzia di Stampa della Conferenza Episcopale Italiana. Volevo chiedere a Samantha Cristobretti una domanda un po' particolare. Lei che ha visto l'universo da, da più, più lontano, ha visto quanto siamo piccoli. Eh, come affronta le problematiche come la guerra o come quelle che delle, dei problemi sempre tra uomini e donne che abbiamo continuamente? Are we doing Italian or English? Or? Uh, yeah. English, please. English, okay. <laughs> I think the question was about how having seen the world from, from outside, from far away, you uh, face daily questions on... Uh, on the planet, I think that was uh, the, the gist of the question. Um, I think it's uh, it, it's strange enough, but when you when you are out there in space, if anything, you feel more connected to to the planet. You almost embrace planet Earth once every 90 minutes. That's how long it takes to to make an orbit around the planet. And so I think that from up there, I felt not not detached from planet Earth and from all our problems. But if anything more connected, more emotionally involved. And so I think when you come back, you're even more motivated to really roll up your sleeves and uh, contribute and do all you can to, to face the great challenges that we have in front of us. Well, this was a very specific question for Commander Samantha, so I will give the word to the journalists again if there are other questions for any, any other speaker. nothing then uh, thank you thank you so much uh, once again we are privileged to have here uh, uh, director general Bachar and uh, commander Cristoforetti and to have this partnership uh, with ESA with European Space Agency and uh, the ambitions uh, should be higher and higher and this is something that uh, I saw as a strong commitment of European Commission European Parliament and member states thank, thank you. you very much